early to bed, early to rise is not just a saying, you know, it's an absolute necessity. If you want, if you want to get the most out of your day, if you want to get the most out of life, and if you just want to do what everybody else does and sit around and waste time, and then you'll be like everybody else. You'll just be a mediocre guy, you know? In the normal stream of, you know, bouts of depression and not feeling much energy and, you know, just slugging around through life and, you know, trying to chant, but, you know, you're not really feeling it and whatever, whatever. That's, that's all our, our can suggest, you know, just, and, and find that person if you can, <laughs> not too many of them, that's kind of on the same page and, and get that person to, to give you a little kick in the bum every now and then. And you'll be better off for it. Hey there, Ruben here from the Breaking Trail podcast. I'm sure we we all have experienced periods when we feel depressed, when we feel down, when we feel things are, are tough and hard, and we, you know, this inertness in the mind. So that's what we're going to look in today and get Balakia's best advice and tips from the yoga system on how to lift ourselves up from depression, uh, laziness, and, and sluggishness. So this is episode number 47. The idea is there are a lot of yoga techniques, there are a lot of ways, a lot of lifestyle habits, a lot of things that we can do to help move us towards the modes of the mode of goodness and to help to help us alleviate and reduce this kind of dull feelings, the feelings of depression, of anxiety, of of like laziness. So I just thought that's at least something that I wanted to ask you about and maybe we could talk about bit about that and what you do in your life and because i know obviously you've been following this lifestyle for a long time so i'm sure you have a lot of tips and advice you could share and a lot of things that we could you know (laughs) you know i don't know it's pretty simple if you know where the mode of goodness is to be found yeah and then you just you know go to that place (laughs) so you know it's our, our process of bhakti yoga is all about that, you know. Mm. So all I do is I just implement our process of bhakti yoga, and that keeps a person pretty much in the mode of goodness. Mm. And then you add, you know, a few things like nature. You know, nature's in the mode of goodness, so you just make a focused effort to try to be in nature as much as possible. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's every day, somehow, some, somewhere. Even if I'm in a city, you know, there's places in a city which is in the mode of passion and ignorance that's more nature-oriented, a park. So where is that park in the city? You find that, and you go there. It's not just like... You know where it is, but you don't go there. You actually go there. Yeah. And you can you can go there every day. You know, walk in the park. You know, they say, oh, it's just a walk in the park. Well, there's some value here. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's not, yeah. Do exercises. You know, there's all kinds of breathing exercises and, you know, stretching exercises and energizing exercises that, you know, are readily available to learn and and practice in the yoga system. I mean, you're a Hatha yoga teacher. You could give people an unlimited number. Things you can do standing up. You don't have to get down on the ground because in the park, you know, it, it might be yeah. muddy, it might be wet, it might be raining. Yeah. But, you know, I've got a whole series of exercises I can do when it's snowing, when it's raining, when it's blowing, whatever it's doing. You know, that actually energizes you and brings in more of that good prana mm. from from the air. Yeah. So, obviously, it, it incorporates some deep breathing. Mm. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, just bending and stretching and, and walking all together. I mean, that's really, really 
going to help your mood. Yeah. You know, I mean, that that's proven. It's not like some theory. I mean, it's absolutely proven. You know, like in Japan, I've, I've mentioned this before, but maybe not on our podcast. But, you know, Japan, Japan is noted to be a stress-filled society. Mm-hmm. You know, the desire to, to work hard and, you know, the educational system is so, you know, success-oriented. You've got to study, study, study and be at the highest, you know, level of the class. And even if you're working at Toyota or Mitsubishi or <laughs> wherever, any, you know, Sam, not Samsung's Korean in it. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Samsung's Korean. But anyway, Sony or whoever, you know, the workers in the factories, they're so dedicated to hard work, you know, and, and the whole society is like that. And, and, you know, Tokyo is so crowded that you're stressed out just to get to work and crammed in little buses and the housing shortage is, is critical. And people live in little honeycomb-like things. They'll have a room just filled with these honeycomb-like little little caves. That's where a guy lives, one of those. <laughs> and he just crawls in there. That's his house. You know, and he goes in there and he sleeps and it's hardly even big enough to sit up in, but maybe he can sit up. But that, in other words, that's the kind of society it is. Mm-hmm. So that, of course, stress affects people in a tremendously negative way. And disease and all the mental issues and everything that comes from that. Yeah. And so they have a, a word in the Japanese language, and that word means he died from stress. Like oh, he died from a heart mm-hmm. attack or he died from you know, cancer. This word is he died from stress. And or overwork, that kind of idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. So anyway, this is of course not good for the companies. You know, they got workers dying or they're they're not can't perform to their maximum because of all of this and et cetera, et cetera. Suicide rates and unbelievable. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> you know, they're looking for a solution, you know, not you know, only humane wise, but you know, production wise. <laughs> So they did a lot of testing, and they found out if they could take a person in this condition into nature and, you know, just make it so he, he goes on a, a, a course, a nature course. They call it nature bathing. Mm. And so they would hook him up to all these electrodes for the brain and for the heart and the blood pressure and whatever, whatever, so they could monitor what effect it was having. So, okay, so he goes on his course. First stop, he's got to walk into this place, sit by a stream of running water and just relax and listen to the water. That's all, nothing more. Mm -hmm. No exercises, no nothing. Just sit there and listen. Then the next station is he's got to sit under some trees, lean up against a tree and just listen to the wind and the leaves or listen to birds in the tree or whatever. Next, he's got to go to the next station and sit among some flowers, you know, and just look at the flowers and maybe smell the flower, this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And it, there's a whole course with stations. You do this here and this there and this there and this there. And then out the other end, they check all of his you know, vitals to see what effect it has. And everything is much, much better, much, much better. Mm. And so they got such good success that they now, many of these factories, it's mandatory that a worker does this course every day, during the day. There's a time where he stops work and goes and implements this whole procedure. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, the point is, that's proof that nature works. Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. motor goodness. It will take you out of that heavy, you know, passion and ignorance condition, and 
it lifts you up. It, it improves your spirit. It calms the mind. It calms the nerves and et cetera, et cetera. I get relaxed you just know? by thinking about it. I was thinking about this leaning against a tree and <laughs> <laughs> in the sun. <laughs> so. Yeah. So, so anyway, that, that's something that a person can do if he wants to do it. In other words, he's got to find it. He's got to seek it out. Okay, you got an hour for lunch. Well, are you just going to sit in your little office cubicle or whatever or just go down to the lunchroom, you know, or are you going to just get out in some fresh air, yeah. take a walk, you know, if you can't even get to a park, maybe it's too far. Yeah. You can at least get in some fresh air. It's not indoor air, you know, and... All these things, if you want to, you know, oh, but when am I going to eat? Well, just take something you can eat as you walk. You know, you just walk along and eat a sandwich or eat some energy bars or whatever and just relax. Even though there's cars and traffic, you can just walk and relax a little bit, yeah. you know. And these are things that are real. I mean, it's something that anybody can do. If, yeah. So that's just that part of the formula, you know. I, and then, I, I, I guess I just go ahead. Like, oh, sorry, I, I have to. Um, <laughs> Slava says that he, oh, here's some wind. I have to. It's actually not the wind, but it's the fireplace. <laughs> there's a, there's a thing that's open on it that makes extra air into the fire, but it also produces well, this <laughs> wind sound. That's <laughs> That's relaxing. That's the sound of the fire. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> more of goodness. <laughs> that's, you know, it's it's funny sometimes because, I don't, you, you know, you can have the same sound, but it can be either like sometimes you have this house beside the traffic, and you have the traffic jam, and you have the sound of the traffic, and you have the same house but on the side of the river, and it's kind of a similar sound, but one sound is producing a stressing, you know, <laughs> effect, yeah. and the other sound is very calming and soothing. Yeah, it is. Sounds of nature. I mean, yeah. if if there's nothing else you can do, buy some recorded sounds of nature. There's all kinds of ambient soundtracks. Yeah. And just put it on, man. Put on your headphones. You could do that while you take your lunch walk. You know? Or or, or, if, your... or, or like have a guided meditation or a relaxation, mindfulness, let's call it that, when you're just like you're in your mind, you're traveling to that place, like you said, leaning towards the tree, relaxing and <laughs> taking in nature yeah. and listening to the birds. Yeah. And... All that. But it's nothing like getting out where it's at. You know, outside air is better than inside air. Walking is better than sitting. I'm going to. You know what the Chinese. Go ahead. I'm just. Whatever you need to do. Yeah, I can, can't get it better than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, what do the Chinese say? No, I just opened the window because that's always when I have my fireplace on, I'm dying. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. So anyway, in, in China, there's a saying, running's better than walking, walking's better than sitting, and sitting's better than lying. <laughs> in other words, activity, get up, do something. Yeah. You know, so a lot of times people are just so, especially in the, the conditions you're talking about where the weather's dark and dank yeah. and, yeah. you know, the, there's, there's really no joy out there. But get out there anyway. Yeah. You know, get those good clothes on, man. Put on that good jacket that you spent your life's earnings on and Put on those those nice pants and those good shoes and just get out there and walk and breathe. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it'll change your life. And then another thing has been proven scientifically because people like scientific proof, right? <laughs> singing. Singing is so mood lifting. Mm. You know, just... People are joining choirs. I got a whole article on that. I don't have it with me right yeah, now. Yeah, we, we talked about it. If that yeah. was the same. So, mm. Yeah, so, you know, people are joining choirs and just going and singing a few days a week. 
just because it makes them feel so much better, mm. you know. So you can do that, but instead of just seeing mundane sound vibration, it just at best can operate on the physical and mental level. Chant mantras. Sing the mantras. That's transcendental. That works on physical, mental, and the level of yourself, the spirit soul, mm. you know. So, but you've got to, again, you've got to do it. You know, you've got to make it happen. And you say, well, I don't have anybody to sing with. Again, record it. Yeah. You know, people sing with the radio or the, all the time. Yeah. You know, so why not? But listen to transcendental sound. You know, hearing, chanting, that's two of the most important things you can do in your life. Mm. You know, remembering. And, and, you know, just eating the right food. There's more to goodness food, there's more to passion food, and there's more to ignorance food. Right. You know? Yeah. And if you want to be in the mode of ignorance, you have to eat more to, excuse me, if you want to be in the mode of goodness, you have to eat more to goodness food. You know? So meat and fish and eggs and all that's that's in the mode of, you know, ignorance. You know, that's going to take you there. Yeah. And you say, well, it doesn't matter. It matters, you know. This is absolute truth, you know. Vegetarian diet, you know, lifts you up consciously, spiritually. All kinds of cleansing takes place, not only in the body, but in the mind, in the heart. You know, so you need to incorporate that. And fresh. I'm just, imagine, you know, springtime, I'm thinking, you know, when it's like that, you know, fresh fruit, fresh f fresh vegetables not, and organic if possible. Like, just get that life energy into you, not just the old stale that's been lying in the store for ages, but like something really <laughs> yeah, <laughs> rejuvenating. Yeah. Mm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a lot of different little bits to everyday life that you can implement that will really, really move you forward, you know. And you're going to feel better for it. I mean, it's not like you're going to be punishing yourself. You're going to be enlivening in yourself. <laughs> but we've got habits that makes it hard to break out of. Exactly. You I know, was, yeah. Louching around, you know, motor ignorance and sleeping more than we need to and eating crap food and sitting glued to some screen and you know w yeah. whatever yeah. so you got to break out of that you've got to you've got to make an effort but what's what's what, what's the key to make that happen i just spoke to someone some a friend of mine she's chanting as well but she just said like sometimes it's she just it comes under this depressed state of mind and she feels like she doesn't want to do anything she just wants to sleep and that you know and just hopes that it's going to get better the kind of a liberating you know <laughs> maybe after i've been sleeping it's going to be much better and she doesn't want to chant she doesn't feel like chanting or doing this she knows she should but it's worse it's not better yeah you get just, worse <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true because <laughs> it puts you even more under the mode of ignorance yeah you know, there's two kinds of motivation. There's motivation and then there's self-motivation. Motivation is obviously good, but that's when somebody else is helping you be motivated. You know, and sometimes that's where we have to start. You know, we don't have the self-motivation to do some of the things or all the things I've referred to. To get up early, to go out for that walk, to do the exercise. We don't have that self-motivation. So find somebody, if possible, that can give you a call and say, hey, have you taken your walk today? Have you done your chanting? Hey, or if, if possible, maybe they say, let's go for a walk. Yeah. Come on, I'm coming over and we can go for a walk. Yeah. Get you out of the house. That's motivation which can lead to self-motivation where you don't need anybody to wake you up. You don't need anybody to challenge you to, to, to do this, to do that. Yeah. You know? And, and pretty soon you want to do it. You're self-motivated. And that's where it's got to come to. Right. Right. You know? 
But if you're not there, you're not there, you know. So your friend you're referring to, maybe there's somebody around her that can, you know, be the one to, to do that. Yeah, Remember she, I was talking about Alcoholics Anonymous where yeah. the sponsor calls you up and says, hey, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Well, why can't we implement that kind of procedure? I guess, and, I guess I guess we like refrain from doing it because we feel like we need to be strong and I don't want to admit that I'm weak or <laughs> that that's self-defeating. Yeah. You totally. Know, if if we're honest with ourselves, we will admit it. I'm too weak to do it, but I want to do it. Yeah. You know, theoretically I want to do it, but I'm just not doing it, then seek out that motivation from an outside source yeah you know and uh, I, know. I mean we're all where we're at and and we have our strengths we have our weaknesses everybody you know don't be afraid to admit your weaknesses we're always bragging about our strengths <laughs> hoping somebody else will recognize my strengths but we're very reluctant to admit our weaknesses yeah you know and that again is putting us in a dark place yeah so that's true uh, just just like uh, yeah sometimes it seems like it's it's just hard to yeah well I, I i guess what i was gonna say is i guess it's easier when you have the daily habits as well because then it's like brushing your teeth you do this every day it's not just like it feels harder to do it once a week and that's what i was gonna get to i think it's easier to do it when you have that habit to do that every day you, 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 you know, and a and a schedule, and a, a ske routine, a routine, right? Not every yeah. day, but at this time, every day, right? I see what I mean, you that's mean. That's the yoga system. I see what you mean. You know, sometime during tomorrow, I'm gonna do it, and then it's just, uh, yeah. Or I'll do it later today, and then you just never do it. No, it's seven in the morning. This is what I do at seven in the morning. It's five in the morning or six. This is what I do at this time. Yeah. You know, and it's it's going to keep you going. You develop a habit and then it's just what you do at that time. It's not like you can think about it. Yeah. You know, it's just, I do this at that time. Yeah. And now it's easier and easier. And then it becomes, you know, a very, very positive habit in your life. I, I I just I'm impressed over that you have been able to keep that when you're traveling because I've been traveling a lot now and it's it's hard for me to keep the the, the habits. So much things are happening and you know these guys are talking in the evening and you want to take part of the talk and you want to like it's interesting and it's hard to. <laughs> well, if you want to get up early in the morning, you got to protect your evenings. Exactly. Exactly. You know they're talking, but is that talking? going to interfere with your getting up early? Yes, it is, probably. Well, is that talk that important? It's interesting, but is it more important than getting up, you know, and keeping your schedule? Yeah. No, it's not, I can tell you. Yeah. So, therefore, you got to sacrifice. You can't have everything, <laughs> you know. So, if you're determined to protect your mornings, you got to protect your evenings as well. Mm. You know. Exactly. So, it's, it's priorities, what's important. People sit around so late talking nothing, you know? I mean, yeah, it's interesting, it's friendly, and it's whatever, whatever. I mean, when I do programs with people, I end it at a certain time. Okay, that's all. That's the end. Yeah. Now we go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> because we're going to start early tomorrow morning, you know? And, and you need to go to bed now so you can wake up and be able to do that with some enthusiasm, with some feeling of, I like this, rather than struggling mm. because you didn't get enough sleep. And then you hate it. You know, you hate early mornings because it's painful. It's a struggle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yoga system is flawless. Early to bed, early to rise is not just a saying. You know, it's an absolute necessity. You know, mm. and... If you want, if you want to get the most out of your day, if you want to get the most out of life, and if you just want to do what everybody else does and sit around and waste time, and then you'll be like everybody else. You'll just be a mediocre guy, you know. 
in a normal stream of, you know, bouts of depression and not feeling much energy and, you know, just slugging around through life and, you know, trying to chant, but, you know, you're not really feeling it and whatever, whatever, you know. <laughs> it's and a, if, hmm. yeah, it's, that's all I, I can suggest, you know, just, and and find that person if you can, <laughs> not too many of them, that's kind of on the same page and, and get that person to <sighs> to give you a little kick in the bum every now and then. <laughs> Yeah. You know, just just help you get after it, so to speak. Mm. And, yeah. and you'll be better off for it. Mm. I, I I guess just sometimes you lose your focus of what's important, like you say. You you think that those things don't matter. You you start making ex exceptions and you know, oh maybe, you know, I know that I should follow a vegetarian diet, but oh I'm with my family and they're serving meat and maybe I should just have a little bit and and just, you know, as <laughs> once you start making exceptions, it's very hard to Yeah. If you're wishy washy, you're not gonna be successful. Yeah. You know. And like you say, you can always find excuses to not do what you should do. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. But that means you're not going to go very far and you're not going to get what is available to you. you know, it's just like, mm. that's how it is. And there's nothing equal to internal strength. Nothing feels as good as internal strength. And nothing feels as bad as internal weakness. No, I mean, so you got to build that strength. Guys go to the gym, build an external strength, got big muscles, ripped out, so on. Uh, but, you know, so what? You know? But internal strength, that goes with you to the end and beyond. So, and that is coming from you following the the process for doing the positive things that will build that strength that will make you stronger spiritually, right? Yeah, just working out, but in a different dimension. Yeah, you know, and I, I you know, I can't can't stress and all this positive thinking stuff. I mean, you know, it does what it does, but it's not what we're talking about, you know. It's not like positive thinking. It's about like what's purifying me, what's purifying my mind, what's purifying my heart, what's purifying my consciousness. You know, I mean, you can have the biggest demon that exists, you know, on a real positive thinking trip, you know. <laughs> so that doesn't really take yeah. you where we're talking about going, to the mode of goodness. And then pure goodness, you know, the next level, you know. And so we become more and more interested in spiritual life, not less and less interested in spiritual life. I mean, go to these positive thinking gurus and see how interested they are in spiritual life. See if they know who they are. You know, do they know who they really are? and what the goal of human life is. And I can tell you, 99.9% .9 of them will not have a clue. Hmm. So if they don't know what the goal in life is, how are they going to help you achieve the goal in life? When they don't even know what it is. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So you've got to understand what we're presenting is different than what you may hear somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And what is the goal in life for a human? Spiritual realization. You know, that's the goal in life. Preparing for death. Here we go into the heavy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. If people have stuck around for 40 minutes, they can hear that. <laughs> oh. yeah. But it's true, mm -hmm. you know. So you're going to die anyway. Why not prepare for it properly? And why not feel good all the way till that moment? I was going to say, it's not just a big austerity. It's, it's joyful. It's a, it's a good life until yeah. that moment happens. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know? I have a totally. friend right now it has got ALS on the tail end of the, of the disease. ALS is that disease. You know what ALS is. With the same that Mother Vendra. Yeah, although she's a rare exception. But anyway, it's when, when your muscle deter not muscles, your nerves deteriorate, the, sh the sheath around your nerves actually begins to just be destroyed. And, and so the impulses that go from your brain to your hand, for instance, they don't make it there. They, they get lost along the way, like an electric wire that all the insulation's off of, and it just starts sparking and, oh. and going everywhere instead of reaching the light bulb. Right. You know, short-circuiting kind of thing. Anyway, that's what the disease is, and it's just progressive, and it gets worse and worse. And You know, first you lose, you know, your mobility to, you know, varying degrees. And, you know, so you can't walk very well, and then you can't walk at all, and then you, your hands, and you, ultimately you can't feed yourself, and then you can't talk, and then, you know, ultimately— you know, you've got to be fed through, you know, a tube in your stomach. And then and finally, the, the organs just shut down. Mm -hmm. The heart stops beating and, you know, everything stops working and you die, you know. So it's, it's quick. On, on generally, it's, a, you know, after diagnosis, it's often one year or less mm -hmm. before it's over. But anyway, he's on the the tail end of this whole story. Now he can't talk and he can't, you know, do, but he's been preparing for this, you know. He's been involved in this process for some years, quite a few years. And he, you know, of course, when he was diagnosed with this disease, it became more serious about it. This was early on when he still had a, most of his abilities, you know. But he knew what was common, and he, he got very serious. So he started really implementing all the parts of the process, the hearing, the chanting, the remember, the studying, the, the listening, you know, the, the making the, the offerings, all the things he could do till he couldn't do them, mm -hmm. you know. And then as things got impossible for him to do, he just continued on. And one of the last senses to shut down is the hearing. You know, so constant hearing, hearing the mantras, hearing, you know, this truth, hearing, you know, the reality of who he is. He's got time to meditate on this. And, you know, so it's probably, and who knows, but it's probably going to be in the near future where he's going to transition from this body to, you know, the next stage. And he's, he's, he'll be prepared. He's preparing every moment of every day. Wow. Wow. You know, and so that's uh, that's what it can lead to. In other words, you've got to start somewhere, and you know, the earlier the better. Yeah, so it's become your life. That's your con That's your whole understanding of life. Yeah, and it's no big surprise. It might be kind of a shock when you're diagnosed with cancer or ALS or whatever it is. You know, that's going to have its moment of impact. But, you know, you kind of just settle down and go, okay, that's what's going on. It's going to happen to, to, some, to me somewhere, somehow anyway, so yeah. <laughs> now I know. Let's go. <laughs> At least you, you have a clear, clear indication of, okay, this is how much time I have, okay. Yeah. And you might yeah. get really serious, like you say, to your friend. Yeah. And he's had nice support, you know, people around him are really assisting in this whole you know, program of going forward and yeah, yeah, he's very, very fortunate, very, and he knows it. I mean, he's he's appreciative of that. We've communicated quite a bit, you know. Now he's he's he can't communicate, but you know, I can still. It's a one way I can send, you know, <laughs> thanks to him. But, but uh, anyway. But let's say you don't have so much time to prepare. I mean, you don't have that six months or a year, you know. It's an immediate thing. You get killed in an accident, you know. Today you think it's going to be a good day, and, you know, all of a sudden your body's destroyed. Wow. 
Are you prepared for that? You didn't have time to sit down and get serious. Exactly. You got to be prepared all the time. Exactly. So when that moment comes, whether it's unexpected and, and immediate or, you know, kind of long term, you're ready. Yeah. You're ready. And that's the purpose of human life. So back to the gurus of the positive thinking philosophy, are they teaching that? No, they're thinking about, you know, be here now mm. <laughs> in your enjoying life. You know, experience that that sensation of the, you know, the dessert on the tongue, the chocolate cake as it slides down your throat or whatever, you know. Uh, you know, or the the looking at the, the beauty of whatever you think is beautiful, you know, and just meditate on that. No. You know, I mean... That's not what we're talking about here. So that's why we're trying to, to explain that this podcast and this information is different. It's a different category of focus. Exactly. You know? And uh, exactly. that's why we don't have many viewers. <laughs> <laughs> it's that we're not, you know, the number one podcast in 92 countries. Because people hear what yeah. they want to hear and... If yeah, you just yeah. want to live a mediocre life, like you said once, you're going to have that yeah. possibility. You know, there's a saying, you see what you want to see and change will never be. <laughs> yeah. 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 You just see what you want to see. That's good. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we're almost getting time to end it up. I think it's time to wrap it up. Yeah. yeah. But uh, mm. those are some points, you know, and, you know, if you need some encouragement, you know, we're willing to, to give you some encouragement. These podcasts are for that purpose, <laughs> to encourage you. Yeah. You know, it's a motivational speaking session on a, you know, a different subject, so to speak, or a different level. Yeah. You know, these motivational speakers, they go around and they try to motivate people. You can be the best you can be, you know, don't let anything get in the way, you know, go deep. You know, you can, you, when you think you're, you're a hundred percent finished, you're only 40%, you're losing only 40% of your capacity, you know, push through and get to that other 60% till you're really at a hundred percent. I mean, this kind of approach. And it's somebody who's done that through some athletic, you know, amazing feat or, you know, just overcome all kinds of obstacles in his life that would completely destroy an average person. But he pushed through it. He got through it, you know, you know. So, you know, there's a lot of those people. Yeah. You know, and and that's to be appreciated. They're out there trying to spread the conviction that they have that got them where they are. But take it, and there's nothing wrong with with that, but take it to a, the next level, you see. And, and, you know, the obstacles to spiritual life in comparison to the physical difficulty is minor, but compared to the mental level is greater. Because we're so influenced by the material influence, you know. The modes of passion and ignorance that just bury us. And we've been buried for a long time. It's like a dead man trying to get out of the grave, you know. Not so easy. <laughs> yeah, so your point is that's where the challenge is, yeah. Not the physical, but the on the, on the mental level. Yeah, I mean, some of these people, I mean... Because they're so successful in meeting all their physical, which includes mental challenges, when they take to such a process as we're describing, they've got so much already in place. You know, they've got some ability to push when they want to give up. And if they're, they're motivated to go to that spiritual realm, then that'll be an all an asset. You know, that'll definitely be a plus. 
but it's a tool. And if you don't use the tool for its correct uh, purpose, then it's just a tool. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. A key can unlock a door, but if you don't put the key in the lock, the right then door. And in the right it's door. Just, it's just a key. Yeah, the right door. It's just a key. <laughs> you know? uh, you can have a whole key ring, but it doesn't do you any good. <laughs> you ever been like that where you got all these keys and you don't even know what they go to anymore? <laughs> yeah. I don't even remember what this key's for. Yeah. It's, just keys. it's just on my on my key ring. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's just weight in your pocket. It's like, it just makes me think about this, you know, the, the, I don't know, like 400, 600, maybe up to 1,000, I don't know, a lot of Norwegian mountain cabins, you know, and they all are locked. And it's the same key fits for all the mountain cabins. It's amazing. <laughs> you just need to bring the one key. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's cool. That's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, the universal key yeah. that works everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And that's the mantras. That's the mantras. There you go. Universal key. <laughs> so at that point, we best chant some mantras. Yeah. <laughs> mm. And of course, the mantras are the same as always, Goranga Haribo. Yep. After what? How long should we do before we add another mantra? Uh, you, <laughs> how you, many years? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, if, yeah. no, I don't know. Good for the mind not to have changes all the time, just to yeah. you know, be able to... That's that's a that's a challenge, and it's it's good for us, I think, to just okay. I don't need to have new things every time. I can just, you know, it, it reminded me of a, a story I, I heard true story supposedly. I heard it as a true story. Uh -huh. There was this <clears throat> quite well known yoga guru, and he was was you know instructing in pranayama. But he didn't have many students. And so anyway, this student went to him, and there was a, there was a group. It was, a, I guess, a class. And he said, okay, this course is going to last for seven months, or I think seven or eight months. So anyway, they came, and he was going to teach them pranayama. That was all, not all this other stuff, just that. And so they're thinking, man, we're going to learn so many different pranayama techniques, et cetera, et cetera. And so he sat there, and all he did was this one. Mm -hmm. You know? Not a short on. And yeah. so he, that's all he taught them. And, you know, after two days, nothing else. After three days, after a week, nothing new. <laughs> after a month, nothing new. They started leaving. You know, they quit. They quit. And at the end of seven months, he had one student. And that's all he did. Nothing. Uh. <laughs> yeah. But it, it took that guy somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, Very. It's not like we need huge variety. That's when you're bored and you don't have anything that that really enlivens. You know, that's when you need all the variety.
غريب Make it a habit. You'll get addicted. <laughs> and it's a, this is a, just a really nice habit. You have, you know, because you do it together with other people that help motivate you to do this as well. So it's not just you're on your own, but you, you know, have care time with your friends, your family, whatever. Yeah. Or online. Or online, even. That's, that's true, of course. You know, because if your family and friends don't want to know about it, it's not going to be so easy. You know? It'd be <laughs> wonderful if every household chanted the holy names. I mean, that would be yeah. amazing. Mm. But reality is that's... Yeah, I happening. see what you mean. See what you mean. Yeah. So uh, online, yeah. There's a lot of our programs online. You even have a CD on Spotify. <laughs> so I'm... Uh... I do? Yes. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. <laughs> How you do? Yes. I made the big time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll try to get there with our band as well, you know. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, we wish everybody all the best in your life's journey. Yeah. Yes. And don't be afraid to break that trail, you know. Two weeks ago, not last week, but the week before, we did a hike. And we broke trail the whole time, the whole time. And it was like deep, <laughs> it was soft. It's like, I don't know, eight or nine kilometers, almost 10 kilometers of breaking trail. Wow. And, uh, oh, hill, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> I think, yeah. But uh, uh -huh. it, was, it was good, you know. I mean, it wasn't easy. But it was, in the end, it was a, a good thing. Yeah. Felt good. Yeah. When it was over. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, but, but that's a good inspiration because tomorrow we're going to go for a hike out here and I didn't bring skis for some reason, uh, unknown to me. And no one else, most people didn't bring skis, so we're going to have to break trail as well. <laughs> oh, no, good. If it's new snow, it should be easy anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You know. New, new snow is a lot easier than settled in rotten snow. That's that's true. It's heavy snow, though. It's kind of wet here. We'll see. But we'll... Oh, yeah, you'll have a good time. You're out in nature. It's more to goodness. You can't lose. That's very true. It's got to be good. Yeah. You know, if it's harder, you just go shorter distance, but you're out there. Exactly. Exactly. You know, it's that yeah. time in nature that's that's wonderful. Thanks for all the motivation and inspiration. I feel really inspired, so I'm going to go out and have a yeah. hike. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. So. Well, everybody, thank you again, and uh, we'll see you next week. Yeah, we will. <laughs> thank you, Ruben. Thank Always you. a pleasure. Thank you, Valakia. <laughs> my pleasure. Hari Bo to all my friends at the retreat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they send their Hari Bo's. Namaste. Thank you all for listening in and I hope you will be inspired to do these, some of these changes at least in your life and uh, put yourself under the influence of the mode of goodness more and more and, and benefit from that. So, you know, if you, um, if you have any questions, wondering about anything, anything you'd like us to speak more about, then let us know and we'll be happy to do that. And uh, I hope to see you soon again. So have a great day and you know yeah join our email list by the way if you want that's a good way to get updates uh contribute if you want through patreon or or, or paypal and uh, i'll see you soon again so always keep keep staying true to yourself and dare to break trail <laughs>